Deputy Prime Minister Baroness Michelle Moan has uh, today admitted that she stands to benefit from the £60 million deal struck by her husband during the pandemic for PPE that was not used. She says it's the government's fault. What's your response? Well, uh, I, I don't accept that. Uh, what I would say is that there is an ongoing investigation by, both by the National Crime Agency and indeed the Department of Health uh, is suing the company concerned in civil litigation. So there's a limit to what, what, what I can say, but I don't recognise that characteristic, no. OK. The Prime Minister was in Rome yesterday um, and he said that he and the Italian Prime Minister have been drawn to each other, his words. Apparently they even shared a tender moment looking through Margaret Thatcher's papers. How are you feeling about your boss being so close to someone who just three years ago supported naming a street after a known Nazi collaborator? Well, it's always been the case that the United Kingdom government seeks to maintain strong relationships with our European allies. And what I would actually say is that uh, after the Windsor framework and the support that we have shown for uh, Ukraine and broader European security after Russia's invasion, there has been a real warming of relationships, not just with Italy, but the Prime Minister enjoys a very good relationship with the President of France, Emmanuel Macron, and others. And I think it's important for the interests of the United Kingdom for us to pursue those warm uh, relationships. Of course, in doing so, we're not endorsing the domestic policies of, of individuals. What we're doing is saying that we can work together on areas of cooperation, which is what we've done, whether it's in relation to migration or in relation to the, the next generation of fighter jets. Yeah, I, I'm not going to go all the way back into George Maloney's history, because I think that's unfair. We all did things, strange things when we were young people. But Silvio Berlusconi described her as, I'm quoting here, patronising, overbearing, arrogant and offensive. That's Silvio Berlusconi using those words about somebody. Is that really the sort of person that Rishi wants to be seen as his new best friend? Well, Trevor, I don't want to speak uh, ill of the, the dead, but I would take uh, any description from Silvio Berlusconi with a, a, a pinch of salt. What the job of the British Prime Minister is, as has been with all of uh, his predecessors, is to make sure the United Kingdom advances its interests around the world. We're advancing our interests through our relationship with Italy, whether that's through cooperation on the joint fighter programme, whether it's in relation to migration or whether it's in relation to broader European defence and security. That's a productive okay. relationship and I think it's one that the Prime Minister should be pursuing. All right, let's talk about the policy issues that which Mr Sunak and Signora Maloney are forming common cause about and that's stopping the boat. Now, does Rishi Sunak, son of East African nations, really believe that immigrants are going to, as he put it yesterday, overwhelm us and destroy our democracy? Seriously? Well, I, I think the Prime Minister is absolutely right to issue this warning. And indeed, uh, it's not just a warning, it's something that we have seen um, elsewhere. We have seen the weaponization of migration, for example, in the conduct of Belarus in relation to uh, Poland. There's been warnings, I believe, from Finland in respect of, uh, of the conduct of Russia. But there's a broader point here, which is that we do have to reassure people that we have got control of our borders and we cannot have this unsustainable situation where we're enriching people smugglers, the worst people on the earth, uh, through allowing this trade in human beings across the Atlantic, uh, across the, um, the, the channel, yeah. which, is, which is why we have introduced this uh, legislation this week. And it's interesting, yeah. the Conservative Party, uh, all members of the Conservative Party were in support of that, uh, in contrast to the indifference of the Labour Party, the SNP and the Liberal Democrats. All right, I'll let you do that. But, uh, and you know I'm not a nitpicker for language, but really, immigrants are going to overwhelm us and destroy our democracy. This is quite extreme language, isn't it? And if you... Uh, and I understand your point that the Russians have used immigrants and so on, but if you hear that from your own Prime Minister and you are of an immigrant background, it's not nice. Well, I, I don't think the Prime Minister meant it in uh, that way at all. What the Prime Minister meant was, and indeed I think it's uh, incumbent on uh, mainstream uh, politicians like myself and the, the Prime Minister and the Conservative Party to make sure that we deal with legitimate public concerns about uncontrolled migration. Okay. And that's why it's important that we have taken these measures. And I would say that is really uh, a choice that we face between right. us actually being willing to grasp difficult decisions. I don't doubt they're difficult 
versus the failure of the Labour Party or the Liberal Democrats or others to vote for this legislation when it came before Parliament last week. That's a, that's a contrast for the British people to decide on. OK, never mind the Liberal Democrats and the Labour Party. On the Rwanda bill, when it comes back after the new year, it's people in your own party, on the right of your party, who are promising trouble. What concessions are you going to offer, offer to Mr Francois and uh, his colleagues? Well... They say it's not going to work. We, we, we believe that this is a good piece of... Uh, legislation. Uh, the, the essence of this legislation is making sure that we end this vicious cycle of constant litigation seeking to frustrate the deportation of people who've come illegally to this country and cannot be returned to their home country, I, I saying they should go to Rwanda. We think I we've got the balance intention. right to disapply uh, relevant pieces of legislation that are precluding that from happening. I know that's your and, intention, and, and, and but so you've just, got to just get over on the votes this, we, together. Well, actually, it was interesting to me that the Conservative Party, of course we debated this vigorously, but in the end, the vast majority of Conservative MPs walked through the lobbies to support that legislation and not one voted against it. Now, we'll, I will, we'll listen to our colleagues about how we can improve this uh, legislation. Of course we will, but uh, I think this is a good piece of legislation that, okay. that does the job, which is about ensuring that we control migration. So you can envisage that there will be changes to this bill? Well, we, we, of course we don't rule out uh, amendments and, of course, we will engage with it. That's what happens with any piece of parliamentary legislation. What I would say, though, is that the Prime Minister is a pretty rigorous person. He's looked through this very carefully, turned it upside down, shaken it around. He's pretty sure this is the best thing that we can get. But, of course, if there's other ways of improving it, we'll be open to doing that. Um, uh, OK, you're open to, open to change. All right, well, look, the Prime Minister's pretty rigorous. Let's have a rigorous look at his school report. Um, you had five pledges. Now, by our reckoning, done one. That is, halve inflation. And uh, let's be honest, Deputy Prime Minister, um, that's the Bank of England that did that. What, what, what is the point of your government with these other four? Well, in relation to inflation, that's certainly not... not I don't know whether it was you, Trevor, but many commentators were saying in the middle of the year, uh, inflation is out of control, you're not going to meet it. So you I'm, can't I'm, now I'm say... I'm far more you can't, now, you can't now say that when we do that it, we haven't done it. In relation to growing the economy, actually, you can see the numbers have shown that we have bounce back stronger now than France, uh, Germany, no, and many other countries. 5%. Of, of course, not, that's of not course, a trampoline. Of course, of course this, is a, this is against the backdrop of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, rocketing oil prices and so on, but we have got the economy Oil growing. prices are down. And in relation to, to debt, actually, if you look at the numbers from the autumn statement, the, the Chancellor has shown that uh, debt will be falling over the course of this parliament. Uh, and in relation to small boats... Yeah, if you'd said at the beginning of the year... I'll come back to waiting lists, don't worry. Yeah, if, you'd, okay. if you'd said at the beginning of the year that we'd actually managed to reduce the number of people coming to this country by small boats by a third, when if you look, say, at Italy, where it's up 80%, I think people would be would accept that that's progress. Of course, with waiting lists, we have challenges, not least with the, the junior doctor's strike. But even then, it is worth noting that we've virtually eliminated a waiting list of over 18 months. Well, you, you, you say... It's, you know, it's a problem and so on. But actually, that number there, 7.71 million, is a record. It is a record for what they technical, technically call uh, RTTs. And it's not going down. The trend is upwards. Whatever it is that you are doing is not working. So you are not, unless you do something very different, going to meet that pledge that uh, is the one that I think people most care about? Well, of course it's the case that um, we have had this extraordinary pandemic. I know people don't want to talk about it, but no, that was the thing that... Uh, no, Trevor, but, Trevor, but that, that was this, the thing that... The no, pandemic. actually, the, the numbers were, were falling before the pandemic uh, hit on, on many measures. Of course, with the pandemic, that's put unprecedented pressure. On top of that, uh, we've then added on the junior doctor mm -hmm. strike and the consultant strike and, until okay. recently. That has put pressure on, but we're putting record investment in, right. uh, over £12 billion extra just this year. We've okay. got our plans for the long-term workforce plan. Uh, we, we will make progress on this, but I don't doubt okay. that it's challenging. All right, look, I, I won't talk to you anymore, torture you anymore on the five pledges. Let's just, but what struck me is that I don't think you've hit these, but you're adding new pledges. Are you actually, for example, going to curb the use of social media for 16-year-olds? 
Well, you'll have to wait for announcements in that area. I don't think we've actually made a, a formal policy announcement in, in oh, respect so that's, to... Uh, that's possible. What, what, what I do think, and I saw this when I was Digital Secretary, uh, and I see it speaking to my constituents and elsewhere, there is real worry from parents about how they can protect their children from the harms of social media. Now, of course, as a Conservative, uh, I, I don't want to reach for a lever of banning, but we need to look at how we can protect children online, and I think any reasonable government should do that. I want to come back to this issue of what a Conservative looks like right now, but let me ask you about one other thing that you seem to have added, which is, um, or have not added, rather, uh, we were promised guidance for schools on the issue of trans, uh, gender reassignment. Where is it? Well, this is a very serious uh, issue and the guidance will be coming uh, forward very shortly. At the heart of this, we need to rebalance our approach and make sure that parents are put at the heart of our approach. Uh, we need to put all children's safety first and I think we need to have an appropriate scepticism about social transitioning whilst of course respecting uh, children that that are in that situation and this guidance will give clarity on these issues to parents and to teachers putting uh, parents at the heart of decisions and protecting the safety of all children. You've been saying it's coming shortly for quite a long time will we see it this year? Well I, I, I very much I hope we will see it uh, imminently, but you'll, you'll have to wait for the announcements on that, Trevor. All right. Um, can I just ask you, you, you've written an article this morning in which you attack doomsters and you refer to amateur BBC pundits offering as much insight as you could on football tactics. Um, do you want to say who you had in mind there? Uh, well, I think you, it's, it's fairly obvious uh, some of the people that have been uh, spewing their views forth on this. But uh, I think could the, word, well, could the words Gary Lineker be floating uh, through this conversation? Uh, well, uh, I, I think people should should swim in their own lane. I know nothing about uh, football punditry. I can assure you of that. And the, the wider point I was making is that again, the, there's lots of talk about talking this country down. Actually, I see a country where we have a manufacturing sector now larger okay. than France's. We're dominating in artificial intelligence. There's so many okay. reasons to be optimistic about this country. And this, this sort of, uh, this doomsday scenario that they're constantly predicting doesn't okay. actually happen because there's real strength in our economy. So, so, so the message to my fellow political um, anchor, Gary Lineker, is stay in your lane. Uh, well, the, I think uh, each, each person should play to their strengths, Trevor. All right. Well, let's, let's look at your strengths. Um, at the beginning of the year, Mr Sunak was a great strength. He was 30% more popular than his party. Now look where he is. He is just as disliked by the British public as... Uh, uh, he's just as disliked by... Uh, as his party. He's the dark blue line. P Tory party is the light blue line. Um, what are you going to do to claw back that 30 point... Percent, uh, point fall in his personal popularity? Well, uh, what I've seen in, in Rishi Sunak over many years, and certainly as Prime Minister, is somebody that works incredibly hard and deals with the difficult and thorny issues that we face as a country. And of course, when you're making those difficult decisions, you don't win short-term popularity. But if you look at what he's managed to do, whether it's agreeing the uh, Windsor framework, uh, whether it's in relation to reform of A-levels, signing up to the, the Trans-Pacific uh, Partnership, you, you those said, things I'm confident will, over the course of the next year, interview. yield, will yield, uh, will yield you, results. You we're, not, we're not focused on short-term popularity. We're focused on making sure that we no, do no, the right thing for the short-term popularity. You're, you're, you're actually getting... No popularity. Let me, let me just ask you a couple of things to associate with this. The things Mr Sunak is now associated with, Rwanda. Everybody does maths forever. Stop kids buying cigarettes. Um, you said a moment ago, uh, you know, there are certain things Tories don't do. Uh, all of these things seem pretty un-Tory. You're turning the Conservative Party into the Conservative and Nanny State Party. Uh, I would say it's actually totally the opposite. Conservatives are committed to controlling migration. That's our Rwanda policy. Conservatives are committed to making sure every kid gets the best start in life. That's okay. our, that's our uh, policy. I, I could okay. go on, but I look, it sounds and, as if you're trying to draw and, this interview and, to and an And the Rwanda policy is not just about getting, uh, stopping Mr, the return of Mr Farage, is it? Uh, it's, about the best, about. it's about the best thing for our country, full stop. Deputy Prime Minister, thank you very much. Thank you.